Thank you and good afternoon. I'm going to begin my remarks with a brief video introduction to Nokia. So you're on top of the world, but that world is changing. What do you do? Obviously, you have to change. And at Nokia, we've been rapidly transforming ourselves from our heritage in telecom to embrace more of internet practices through new hires, acquisition, changes in product strategy. And really, we think of the web squared philosophy as a logical extension to the democratization of communication that began when we revolutionized the cell phone business uh, nearly 20 years ago. But we come at this web squared orientation with our telecom roots intact. So we've got some differences of viewpoints that I'd like to be right up front about. So first of all, as we think about web squared, we don't think it's about rich people only. Sure, we'd like to sell more devices and services to the four billion people that already are using mobile technology, but we're equally, if not more, excited about the steps required to bring the next one billion consumers into the mobile universe. We also don't believe that one size fits all. We believe in a range of devices and services that span a range of consumer requirements and consumer wallets. Uh, we also have tremendous skills in mass customization uh, honed over delivering uh, operator variants over the years that we think will be leverageable in delivering hyper custom content to consumers around the world. And while the cloud is going to get richer and better, we still believe the heart of mobile solutions are intelligent, beautiful devices that are essentially a logical extension of a human being. So that's our basis. And we're investing in technologies and capabilities to make the mobile device truly a bridge between the physical and digital worlds. In our Tampere, Finland lab, we're investing in research in mixed reality to heighten one of the senses to present contextual information that makes everyday routines much richer. Another example is our point and find application, which is an augmented reality application that allows you to use an internet enabled camera phone to receive contextual information about a specific object. Consumers can also use it themselves to tag information and share memories with friends and loved ones. But you know, the big opportunity that we see is taking this to the next one billion people. And it's not so much about providing communication as about providing access to information and services that people in Western markets frequently take for granted. An example of this is our OV email service. And you sit here in San Francisco and say, who the heck needs another email box? But it turns out, if you don't have access to a PC, as most of these people don't, you don't have the ability to get to most of the web email services. Since we launched OV Mail in emerging markets, we have over 2 million subscribers in a matter of months. So clearly, there is an unmet need for services that are tailored to mobile first usage. And that's really a lot of our focus in emerging markets. So it's not just about making cheap phones, although we're pretty good at that. 
It's also understanding usage patterns, consumer behavior, and what are the avenues to get people consuming services that are gonna be relevant to their lives. An example of this is a capability called Nokia Life Tools, which we rolled out earlier this year in India, and we're now taking to some other emerging economies as well, which is all about bringing relevant information to people in rural areas. We make decisions every day based on the information we have at our disposal, but some parts of society have access to more information than others. In the agricultural hinterlands of Western India, many local farmers face an uphill battle just to get the information they need to make a living. Crop farmer Tatatari Bongi has been trying out a new mobile phone service called Nokia Life Tools. Tatatari receives advice on pesticides, the weather, and even the growing rate for his crops at market, all sent directly to his mobile phone. <laughs> Rural banker Mahesh Shetty is using Nokia Life Tools in an entirely different way. He and his family are using the service to learn how to speak English. Mahesh's children, Aperva and Samarth, eagerly await their father's return from work to practice their language skills on his mobile phone. Sentences are delivered to the handset in both the Marathi and English language, helping the children to increase their English vocabulary. I discuss the word Can you read this? Not waiting to keep so much cash at home, I went to the bank to deposit it. <laughs> Now the interesting thing about this service is it was important to get the consumer behavior understanding right as the underlying technology. When we first rolled this out, we had monthly billing and it turned out that was too much of a cash flow burden for our target consumer. When we switched to weekly billing, user retention rates went up. Another service that uh, we recently announced is something called Nokia Money. Uh, Nokia Money is a mobile financial services, and the premise here is that there are 4 billion users of cell phones, but only 1.6 billion bank accounts in the world. So there's a huge number of consumers with jobs, with money, who lack access to the convenience and security of basic financial services. The business model of brick and mortar banks and even ATMs are too cost prohibitive to reach some of these rural areas. But if you have the processor and memory capabilities of a cellular phone, plus the retail presence of a Nokia in many of these emerging markets, you can start to put in the infrastructure to provide these financial services. Key thing here is that we're doing this based on an open network. Most of the uh, financial services offerings today are tied to a single operator or a single bank. Uh, we are operator agnostic, bank agnostic, and sadly for some of my colleagues, handset agnostic, because you shouldn't be limited by uh, who you want to exchange money with, with who's on your same cellular network. So we'll be a commercial pilot later this year with this service, targeting first emerging markets, but ultimately going uh, to mature markets as well as a matter of providing uh, greater convenience and access. Now, if, if you go to the other end of the spectrum, uh, some of the more mature economies, it's not really about access to information, it's how do you deal with information overload. And I hope some of you had a chance to visit the OV suite upstairs. And you can see the investments we're making in the OV services platform, which is all about increasing the relevance of information that gets to the consumer. Triangulating your location, your social network, your user preferences to provide in access to information, knowledge of what's going on in a way that wouldn't ordinarily be possible. So we think this is a tremendous opportunity to provide much richer consumer experience and we're heavily investing particularly in the location dimension and encourage you all to either visit the lounge or uh, go online and try out the OV Maps capability. Now beyond using information to improve individual experience is the opportunity to improve our collective experience. And we're also doing quite a bit of research in this area. We've had a project with UC Berkeley, Caltrans, and the US Department of Transportation to gather GPS data from phones in order to do prediction of traffic flows, which turns out to be a very disruptive and cost-effective way of gathering the traffic information as opposed to the archaic sensors in the roads. Highly successful project uh, generating lots of data in a way that protects the consumer privacy. And this is functionality that is uh, actively going into commercial product products and uh, it's a great benefit, uh, not just to the consumer for convenience, but also for pollution, congestion, and all sorts of other societal benefits. 
Now, we think there's much more that we can do leveraging the ubiquity of the mobile device. So we're also looking at new types of sensor technology, both bio and nanotechnology, so that you can use the device to sense the environment in a way that human beings cannot. So air pollution, water pollution, uh, origin of food content, all of these things will be possible using the same uh, device that you use to call your mom. Uh, you can see we've got uh, big plans, big ambitions, and unlike the traditional telco model, we're doing this in an open way. Uh, in just the past three months, I, I don't have a Twitter deal to announce, uh, but, but, but we, we do have a, a significant de deal with Facebook uh, for life casting on OB, bringing your location information directly uh, to your Facebook page from your mobile device. Also a very significant collaboration with Microsoft where they'll be porting their enterprise applications to our Symbian uh, E-Series devices. So quite a bit going on in the collaboration space, not to mention the four million forum Nokia developers uh, that are managed from our, our, our location out here in Mountain View. So a lot going on in the open uh, ecosystem and I think that environment just gets richer as our volumes continue to grow. So we're very excited about the prospects of a web squared world. Uh, I think it's a logical evolution of our theme of connecting people. It used to be about making great phone calls, and now it's really about connecting consumers to who and what matters to them. Thanks very much.